Hello there, welcome back to this unusually sunny day in northeast England. It's actually warm as well, so that's a double bonus. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Seachem Tidal 55, also known as the CK55, S I C C E. They're the actual manufacturers, Seachem Market, this particular filter. And it is a good one. You can probably see there that. I've already set it up because it came with nothing in it, unfortunately. So if you're interested in seeing what every particular part of one of these filters do, please check out the video I did a while back on the 110 version of this, which was a little bit bigger. The setup was more or less the same, and because this one didn't come with anything in it, I'm basically just going to show you how I've set this one up to be, well, in my mind, as efficient as it possibly can be. When these come from the manufacturer, they basically just come with a small block of foam in the bottom and a bag of pumice. Um, sorry. <laughs> Should I call it pumice? Mm. Now when you buy one of these, it comes with very little stuff in it. There's basically just a small coarse blue foam in the bottom and a bag of reasonably dense grade white pumice. Which is not too bad, but it does vary wildly in its quality. Sometimes it's exceptionally porous and good, other times it's very dense and it can have bits of grey and black rock, or it can have bits of rubbish in it. Ideally, that wants to come out, so I can see why Chris has sent me this one up with nothing in it. Okay, let's bring the camera in and I'll show you what I've done to this particular filter. Oh, but before we do that, I'll just say that CKM say that this one is suitable for roughly 55 US gallons or round about 200 litres. Oh, I might as well take a few minutes just to explain for people who either aren't familiar with these particular filters or can't be bothered to check out the 110 video. Water's drawn in through here which is more or less towards the bottom of the tank and also through here which is the surface skimmer so it draws from two different places at once which is really good because it ensures that your main body of water stays clear and the top stays clear of debris that adjusts the uh, split between how much is taken in here and how much is taken in here this dial on here is your overall flow so if you shut that right down not much water will come out of here because not much water will be able to be drawn in through the pump likewise if you open that right up it'll allow your pump to draw as much as it possibly can so you'll get the maximum flow coming out that's quite a nice touch because there might be some situations where you might have better or something like that or butterfly fish you know something that lives on or near the top that doesn't like a heavy flow and you can set the flow to exactly what you want that thing on there is a pollution indicator when the water rises inside of the filter that pops up like so so if you see that sticking up you know that it's pretty clogged in here and you need to clean it out so the water is pumped up from the pump whoosh over the top down into here and it's a bottom up filter so it fills the bottom and then it rises up through this removable tray through your foam or foams through your filter media and back out to the tank. It's a very simple setup, but it's pretty effective. And this removable tray actually holds quite a lot of media. So what do we have in the container? Well, I'll empty it out and I'll explain that for you. So in the bottom, we've got a medium density foam. This one is a bumpy one, so it's got the bumps facing down. See the slits in the bottom there? That's where the water rises up through the foam. So a bumpy part down, that means we've got maximum surface contact area for the muck and the water. And then it goes through a fine pad. Then it'll go through approximately 700 grams or, oh, what'll that be? 1.7 pounds, 1.8 pounds roughly of um, bio gravel which is a very porous gravel made from the same stuff as the bio home and that's a great way to store that sort of stuff in a mesh bag it's easy to remove and that basically just creates like an, an anoxic sort of filter you know by the time that gets crammed into your filter the water is mostly going around the outside so inside of here 
you get a greater proportion of the anaerobic bacteria responsible for reducing the nitrate, which makes it a bit more effective than if it's in a uh, canister filter just lying flat or something with all the water flying through it. And then in the top we have roughly 300 grams of a big version of Biohome which would normally be used in shower filters or sumps called Maxi Ultimate. And you'll notice that there's no coarse pad in the bottom of there. Normally we'd go coarse, medium, fine and I'll explain why that is in a moment. Before I put it back together I will say that on this filter it's got little sharp bits of plastic here and here and here and here. It's best to file those off if you're going to be putting a mesh bag in because if you drop that in it's not a problem but then if you rip it out you can tear the bag and lose your media. So best to take those off if you're using a mesh bag in here. And because the bag isn't overfilled it flops in there and fills the space quite beautifully. There you go, very simple setup. That's it. Now you may notice that some of this media will actually be sticking up just above the water surface because the water flows out over here. That doesn't matter at all, in fact it could work to our benefit. Because this is so porous it'll actually draw the water up so the whole of this media will be saturated but the flow through it will be exceptionally slow and again that will aid in you know, a greater proportion of that supporting the anaerobic side of things. And that's really what we're trying to encourage in here as well as the aerobic but aerobic lives everywhere you know it doesn't need any sort of special treatment. The anaerobic does so by putting that bag of bio gravel in there and having these fellas in the top with a very slow flow going through them hopefully that should do exactly what we want it to do. So that is a very quick simple setup to make this thing very efficient. It's basically just a container that holds foam and media with water flowing through it. It couldn't get simpler it, it, it's well made as well Certainly nothing on this feels cheap or tacky and they've stood the test of time. They're a really, really good filter. I can't recommend these ones enough. I get nothing but good reports about them from all over the world. Right, the reason why we didn't have a course pad in the bottom of our main chamber is because I've cut one for the intake pipe. Put a slit in there with a knife, which just enables me to feed that onto there and drop that in the tank. So now the heavy muck gets caught in here, anything else gets caught in the filter, clean water goes back to the tank. And if anybody's interested in where I got the foam from to make that intake sponge, it was actually from a piece which was about a meter long or roughly three foot and I think that was classed as 100 by 100 which is millimeters so for you guys in the US that was four by four, four inches by four inches. And all I did, I just cut a piece off about 2 inches or 50 mil. Put a slit in, fed that on the end. Very, very simple. And I'm sure you'll have seen other people doing that in videos on hang on the back filters. It's a good thing to do. And I might have actually forgotten to do that on the 110. I can't remember. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, I made one that looked like a toilet cleaner. This is a better option by far. I mean, it's just neat and also if you've got multiple hang on the back filters on multiple tanks you can just cut them to whatever size you want you can get a lot out of one of these pieces of foam so from the manufacturer they say that this will be suitable for a tank of roughly 55 US gallons or around about 200 liters we've managed to get roughly a kilo of media in there so using the rule that we've come to rely on that would be roughly 100 litres or 26 US gallons that this would be suitable for. So roughly half what the manufacturer says, which is about par for the course. Most manufacturers, if they say it's suitable for 300 litres, it'll be suitable for 150 litres. You can generally halve it. But even so, you know, that's not a very big filter for a 100 litre tank. If it's normally stocked, 
if it's a heavily stocked tank, like if it's goldfish or like an axolotl tank or just big cold water fish, a little cichlid tank, something like that, but, but a heavy stock or breeding tank for example, I would say maybe choose one of these for a tank up to 50 litres or 13 US gallons if you wanted the full cycle, setting it up like this. Um, otherwise, you know, if you didn't really crave a full cycle then it would be suitable for bigger tanks. It would certainly keep the ammonia and nitrite down to zero in much bigger tanks than I've just recommended. So considering that's all the manufacturers tend to think about, 55 US gallons or 200 litres is probably about right for half a job. If you want a full job, you can halve that. Hopefully that made sense, there was a lot of figures there. I will put those in the video description and also in the pinned comment. And I think from this video onwards, Every time I mention the full cycle, I'll just explain what it is. That's basically the processing of ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. The first two would be processed by the aerobic bacteria, which lives everywhere. It's very easy to culture. The nitrate would be reduced by anaerobic bacteria, which is more difficult to cultivate. That would tend to grow in a deep substrate if it was left undisturbed. It would grow in suitable media. It would be enhanced if the flow over and around that media was slow so say you wanted to turn this into a pure nitrate filter just fill that up with some sort of bio home turn the flow right down so it's literally dribbling out of there and you've got a hang on the back nitrate filter once the filter seeded with bacteria it shouldn't need to be seeded again unless you put a really powerful antibacterial treatment in which has wiped out all the bacteria in your filter um, in which case just seed it again and it'll repopulate quite quickly if you've got plants in the tank, use something like Flourish XL. Again, I'll put the link to that in the video description. It's got all sorts of good trace elements, not only for the plants, but also for the bacteria, and it has a source of liquid carbon, which really speeds up your cycle. It makes a hell of a difference when you're trying to cycle a new tank if you've got a source of liquid carbon and good trace elements. Now, the first part of your cycle, which is the reduction of ammonia and nitrite, should only take two or three weeks when you're using good filter media. If you're using plastic, that could extend to months, even in favourable conditions, because plastic is a hostile environment for bacteria to grow. The second part, which is the anaerobic side, which completes the cycle, could take four to six months, but that can be reduced by using proper trace elements and a source of liquid carbon. Obviously, it needs enough filter media for the situation to allow that to happen. If you haven't got enough media for the size of tank and stock and situation, you're not going to get a full cycle. It's quite a simple equation and it does require quite a lot of media if you're going the media only route to reducing your nitrates to get that full cycle. That's why I give these real figures out which are at odds to what most manufacturers say. Most of them will just say this little handful of stuff will treat a thousand litres or you know 200 and odd gallons. It's never going to, you know. I'd rather just tell you how it is and if you want to, well, if you want to get there you'll get there. Things I would warn against using um, which will either kill the bacteria, starve it or just generally slow it down is over treating the fish you know especially with powerful things like meth blue that's just a nuclear option that just wipes your filter out so it could take a long time to come back again especially if you've got residual treatment in there as soon as you finish treating the fish whack some carbon in, get that residual treatment drawn back out and then that'll give your filter the best chance to get going again. Avoid using water conditioners which claim to reduce, detoxify or bind ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. They basically just have a starving effect on the bacteria and even though you've got plenty of space there for bacteria, if their food is locked up in an unusable form, instead of all of that being populated with bacteria you might get I don't know, 20, 30, 40% populated with bacteria and your cycle will take ages to get going. It's common to see people on forums saying the first part of the cycle, which is ammonia zero and nitrite zero, taking seven to eight weeks, which is just absolutely ridiculous. They get talked into using all sorts of lotions and potions to complete the cycle when all they need to do is just change the conditioner to a normal conditioner. And unfortunately, there's a lot of folks don't see that connection between what chemicals you put in the tank and how well the filter does. They're absolutely linked. And if you're putting beneficial ones in, your filter does well. If you're putting damaging ones in, albeit unknowingly, 
your filter doesn't do so well so you don't get the results so you end up with a cabinet full of all sorts of things which you just don't need you just set this up however you want to set this up if you're using half decent media or very good media it will be many times more efficient than what it is when it comes from the manufacturer called Blarmy Gardener there really isn't much stuff in here from the manufacturer <laughs> and it's not a particularly good media so whatever you put in in decent quantity will improve the workings of this filter massively and just in case anybody's asking about the supply of the bio home if you're looking for it in a country other than the UK on the filter pro site I do have links to most of the other distributors around the world it's the flags at the top of each page just click on there go to your local distributor unfortunately I just cannot send anything abroad now the powers that be are making it impossible for small businesses to trade outside of the UK and so many of the the bigger shipping companies and distribution parts of the network are still playing pandemic so until that finishes I'm just stuck to supplying in the UK unfortunately which is why I'm mentioning all those other distributors I mean obviously I would want you to use those local suppliers anyway but for countries that haven't got a local distributor I was sending up until the last few months it's just impossible now unfortunately hopefully that situation will change soon because there's quite a lot of people waking up and pushing back so good times could be around the corner thanks for watching